Right down by the sea. Scotland's national book town. So I'm going to head down to the harbour where I should be able to get parked. And hopefully it will also be where I'll be spending the nights. But uh, that all depends on what it, how it looks and if there's any restrictions at the minute. Harbour Road being the clue, I suppose. This is the harbour, but as I drove in, there's a large sign as you enter saying no overnight parking. So, Wigton will have to wait. I'll I'm going to go down to Whithorn instead, see if we've got any more joy down there, and then come back to Wigtown to uh, come back to Wigton tomorrow. I'm about to the Isle of Whithorn and things are not going quite as expected. Uh, once again, signs up, no overnight parking. Uh, which isn't a problem necessarily. It just means we have to try the campsite for tonight. So, at the minute we're heading towards St Ninian's Chapel. Which is up there. And I'll bring you back when we get closer. No, I'm completely wrong. This is a lighthouse of some description. So, the chapel must be on the way back down. I must have missed it. So there we go. More beautiful sea. Right, let's go and try and find a chapel. There it is, found it. I walked straight past it behind a wall. There's not a great deal of it left. And nearby there's St Ninian's Cave, which has been a place of pilgrimage for uh, hundreds of years, from the Middle Ages in fact. But unfortunately it is also closed, not due to the uh, coronavirus this time, but due to essential repair work. So we can't go there either. So, things have been slightly affected this trip, although things are theoretically open, lots of them are not, and uh, lots of them look like they're not going to be in the near future despite things opening up in Scotland next week. Well, that's the Isle of Whithorn, so time to move on and try and find somewhere to stay.
Morning guys and welcome back to the beautiful sunshine of South West Scotland. Day two, I spent the night in a holiday park. Not my intended destination, but the uh, overnight stops are all closed. And the campsites all wanted pre-booking, which of course I hadn't bothered doing because I wasn't expecting to stay there. But anyway, I don't know if you can hear the background. We're surrounded by crows, which again are very common here. And we're back in Wigton. But before we go and look at the books, which is one of the reasons it's well known, we're going to go and look at another, because Wigton is a martyr town. And I'm standing, if you can probably see, in a graveyard. And we're going to be heading over that way. This is a grave, two martyrs. I won't go into the details of it all because frankly I don't know them all. Uh, but uh, essentially it's to do with religious imposition from England on the Scottish people who uh, were unwilling to accept the new rules and were hunted down essentially and killed. I believe the period, which is late 1600s, was called the Great Killing. And here lies two of the people that are victims of it. Now, not far from the churchyard is a rather more chilling uh, memorial. So we'll go and look at that. Right guys, we uh, are heading down to the Firth. And onto a little wooden walkway. Because this is where the uh, cheerful little people of the 17th century decided it was a good way to get rid of their religious opponents. And we're walking up to it now. So all around us, as you can see, it's very flat. And the reason it's very flat is uh, probably less so now looking at it because there's lots of sheep about. But certainly then, this was very tidal. And every day, gate stuck. Every day, the tide would come in. So, back at the graveyard, the two graves, I believe the man was hanged. But the woman was taken down here and tied to that stone, which is called a martyr's stake, where she was left, and the tide would come in and engulf her, drowning her in the uh, seawater, which would have been slow and doubtless un very, very unpleasant. So there you go. It seems that uh, southwest Scotland in the 1600s wasn't a particularly pleasant place to be. Right, let's go back up to the town and uh, have a look at that and see what Wigton has to offer. Right, I'm just on the way back up. And fortunately, the town has put a, a helpful little plaque up. So there was in fact two women who sadly lost their lives on that stake. A Margaret McLachlan, 63, and a Margaret Wilson, aged only 18. They were drowned on 11th of May, 1685. And it was in a dispute between the Presbyterian Church, which of course is still the main church of Scotland, and the Stuart Kings, who wanted to have their divine right acknowledged, which the uh, Scottish would not accept. So there you go. The... Uh, the other thing it mentions is that out where the uh, stake sits now was actually a deeper channel that fed Wigton Harbour. So it would have been uh, even more tidal than it is now back then. So hopefully that might have made things a bit quicker for the poor women. Right, back to town. We're up in the town. 
it's basically triangular so this street I'm walking along is on the left hand side and the middle of the triangle is a bowling green next to which is a small park now it's very quiet at the minute but just about all of these little shops at some point has book sales and on the other side we're going to walk over in a minute in fact we'll walk through the park stretch right along there And then like so many towns in Scotland, South West Scotland particularly, you have a cross at the peak of the triangle. And that basically is Wigton. So I'm going to put the camera back in the car and I'm going to have a mooch around the bookshops. On the right is a town hall, which is a massive building for such a small town. It really is huge. Don't know why Wigton has such an imposing building, but there you go. Very nice, it looks too, and it's sandstone. Right guys, sadly lots of the uh, bookshops are closed today, uh, nothing to do with the pandemic, just the fact this is the day they close. So I've taken a walk along from the market, Martyr's Stake and we're going to head down to the harbour. It's a beautiful day, so a walk is precisely what the uh, doctor ordered I think, and with a view like that. What more could you ask for? Right, Scottish by delicacy number two. This is a macaroni cheese scotch pie which is basically the casing from the uh, lamb one, but filled with macaroni cheese. There's a lot of Italian inspired things around in Scotland. And there are lots of Italians in Scotland, lots of ice cream shops. And some of the tastes sort of uh, blended, a fusion as it were, between Scottish food and Italian food. And then the other thing they had when I was in the shop, which might be catching the light a bit let me just move it and they're tatty scones which are basically potato and flour mixed together into a round and then they're fried essentially but griddled I should say griddled uh, to give that uh, distinctive burnt look on the outside another taste of Scotland not to be missed guys we've uh, seen a bit of 6th century southwest Scotland we've seen mid medieval southwest Scotland We've seen 16th and 17th century. There's even Roman stuff around here as well. Unsurprisingly, as we're so close to Hadrian's Wall. But now we're going to take a short walk up a hill and see a little bit of Scotland that's even older. So let's go and have a look. It's a lovely walk but quite steep so I'm starting to wish I brought the van up but it's quite narrow as you can see so I'll just have to struggle on here we are some uh, standing stones from several thousand years ago presumably burial 
in a fabulous setting and down there is the sea and the uh, those pine trees wouldn't have been part of the landscape back then I'm sure they look like a modern uh, economic development so there would have been a clear view straight down the valley to the sea so they certainly knew how to pick their spot view in the other direction is pretty impressive as well with the hills behind us there's another cairn 150 meters uphill which we'll go to next this is the first one this would have been the entrance and I suspect this would have been the tomb Yep. So, between four and six thousand years ago, somebody chose a very good spot indeed. Let's go look at the second chamber, second burial spot. This is the second one, where the mound is bigger. So, we'll just see how much is left of this one. Cairn 2. Right. So this one has an even better view. Again, we have uh, standing stones at the entrance and the tomb itself, which may have contained more than one person, of course. It uh, could be family, could be tribe. I'm not really sure. But given the mound it's on, I suspect there may be more underneath. So anyway, this one has an even better view. You can see right down the peninsula, down to the Isle of Whithorn in the far distance. Absolutely stunning. So, we can say one thing about our ancient ancestors. They were keen observers and lovers of nature. Because why else would you choose somewhere like this? And also must be firm believers in some sort of afterlife, I would imagine. Because if you didn't think anything happened after death, you wouldn't have gone to this trouble. So there you go. Absolutely stunning. Right. Back to the van. Luckily it's half a mile downhill this time, which makes life a lot easier. <laughs> 